Things are getting strange. I'm starting to worry. This could be a case for Mulder and Scully. Things are getting strange. Now I can't sleep alone. And in just three lines of lyrical genius, the small Welsh band called Catatonia had inadvertently inspired a young writer called Chris Carter to pen his own odyssey called The X-Files. Next week on Totally Wrong Historical Facts, we learn how a small independent comedy film called Wayne's World inspired a little-known rock band called Queen to pen their one and only hit song, Bohemian Rhapsody. Maestro, if you please, at the intro. Billy back and this time we're going to be looking at Agent Scully the 1-6 scale collectible figure by 3-0. I believe it was originally designed by 3-A which was another side of the company with 3-0 but um, I believe both companies fell out for some reason for some strange reason one probably shagged the other's mum or something I, I don't know honestly but however they did have the X-Files license and they released Mulder and I picked him up but then when Scully was dropped, yeah, I was glad I didn't actually pre-order her because it was a little bit underwhelming in its release. But, um, you know, I, as a collector, you've got to complete your sets. So I ended up getting her just because I needed to finish it off. You can't have mold without Scully. It's just never heard of. So I ended up getting her in the end. I waited for a good deal on eBay, managed to bag her. And now she's here. So quickly, let's take a look at the box and we can see it's got the usual sort of the X-Files branding. Now, I actually went to a, a screening of the first two episodes of the new series of X-Files when it first dropped at the uh, Fox building in London. And oh my God, it was, it was, a, it was an absolute shit show. Not, not the TV show, mind you, the TV show was, but it, it's just, they gave us tickets to the show and we turned up and they, ushered us into this building and we had to turn up and we just went to the the foyer and they all sort of crammed us into this foyer like like cattle then they ushered us down this sort of slightly more dingy corridor down a flight of stairs and we went into this room and it was like a small screening room like a little mini cinema you know the kind of cinema you would get in a sort of millionaire's house like a small room with lots of seats in and we all sat down and you know it, it was quite comfortable but unfortunately, when they started playing the first episode, it kept stopping. It just stuttered and stopped and, you know, every every few minutes it would freeze again. And then they were coming back in and going, sorry, technical issues, we'll get it up and running soon. And we, we just started getting really irritated by the end. We were just like, oh God, will you just bloody play the show for us? In fact, I believe there was probably a couple of journalists there and one of them just sort of called out and just went, if we hurry, we can actually get home and watch the first episode because we were supposed to see it as a premiere, but it was showing the same night on TV. It was, it was all very rushed and all not very well organised. And honestly, it was a bit lame, to be honest. But I enjoyed it for the experience anyway. But yeah, that's the branding for it. And there's a logo up here and I believe it's got the uh, 3A logo. You can see it's actually got 3A written in there. And uh, oh dear, that is a bit worrying because you know it's not supposed to say 3a but it obviously got it's a sort of mix match of both companies and if we turn to the side we can actually see they actually put the logo on there 30 the x files agent scully same logo there and then on the back it's the exact same same on that side pretty much the same on the top let's see if it's the same on the bottom oh no it's a little bit different they've got some uh, warnings and you know 20th century fox logo there and things like that because you know we're so excited for that so yeah in terms of a box once you actually open it up you've got the same plastic clamshell that you get with most figures it's nothing to write home about it's not going to blow you away so you know it, it serves its purpose it looks okay but it's nothing special and here she is out of the packaging and yeah she looks okay actually it's not too bad She's got some nice clothing on, the uh, the collar of the shirt's not too thick, the actual suit is actually quite slimming, 
So they've actually managed to get all the uh, suit tapered in. It looks um, decidedly feminine, which is really important on a female figure. In terms of proportions of the body, not too bad. I, in fact, I'll pull out Mulder here. We'll put him next to her. Come here, Mulder, you. Okay, so quickly, I've just moved Mulder out next to her to show what they look like together. Height-wise, it's not too bad, but um, yeah, you can see one big flaw with this, and I'm, I'm not sure who's to blame here. Is it is it Mulder or is it Scully? But those heads do not match. They just they just don't work together. There's something really bugging me about the uh, the scale of the heads. Whether maybe, maybe Mulder's head is just too big, or Scully's head is just way too tiny, and I suspect it's Scully. Her head is way, way, way too small. I mean, this is a male head here, and he's got short hair. And yet, she's supposed to be a female head with quite thick, bouffant -y hair. I mean, she's got that sort of 90s Rachel thing supposed to be going on, but it still looks smaller, the hair, than his. How does that work? It's very, very strange. But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna bitch and moan about the head a little bit more a little later. But while we're here, let's have a look at actually what we get with the figure. Okay, coming in and actually looking at the head, we can see it is definitely Dana Scully. The sculpting is really good. I, it genuinely is. The paint is a little bit regressive in terms of uh, modern techniques, but it's not too bad, you can see nice glossiness in her eyes you can see the light reflecting off them the lips are quite nice the bridge of the nose is perfect it looks exactly like Gillian Anderson's nose and I think the sculpting on the hair is pretty good if we bring it around you see they've done a pretty good job it's not too brown it's not too red I think they've done a really nice um, job with the actual color of the hair and even the hairstyle looks really good. This is quite cool, this little flick at the back there. The eyebrows are painted nice. The eyes are nice and glossy with a nice light blue in there. There is light paint flicking in there, but it's... I really like the, um, the tone of the skin as well. She's not too tanned, which can be a flaw with a lot of these types of figures. They can overly tan them. We come down to see the suit, we can see that the uh, collars are nice and flat, not too thick. Stitching is really solid on the suit. Very nicely tapered into the waist. And the trousers. Got that lovely uh, iron seam in there. And it, it's difficult to do these types of things because when you box up a suit like this, it can get really creased and ruffled and it can knock the whole thing off. But they've managed to get this so that it doesn't crease up and it sits pretty nice on the body. And then the shoes. The shoes are really good. Again, high heels. These are the most weakest point of your foot. So, you know, once things start to warm up, these can cause a problem. But they're actually quite sturdy, quite nice. Quite a nice glossy effect on there. And the colour of the feet matches the colour of the rest of the body. Overall, in terms of paint, really good. The head sculpt is really nice. It's uh, a bit regressive with the paint application. You can see the cheekbones are nice and prominent. The chin is actually in proportion. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a nice head sculpt and it's it's really nice clothing. It is just a shame that it is undersized. And here are all the accessories she comes with. We can see she's got relaxed hands, gripping hands, fisted hands, and she's got a gun holding hand as well. But only for the right, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's only for the right hand, which is a shame because I'd like you to be able to hold the gun in either hand, but how is ever. But speaking of guns, this is the detail in this gun here. It's quite nice. The uh, top of it kicks back. You can see the bullet inside. We can see it's got some scratches and some marks in there. Nice sort of shiny gun metal. And of course, the magazine comes out and shows the bullet. I think, you know, this is this is par for the course now. They've really nailed these sort of like miniature 1.6 scale guns. And in fact, if a figure doesn't have a, a kickback thing on there and the magazine being able to be remove, it kind of fails. She comes with this big mag light style torch, really chunky. It's got this nice reflective panel in the front, just like Mulder. 
where if you shine the light on it right, it does actually look like it's reflecting light, which is really good. But then you've got the uh, gun holding pouch here. Stitching on the pouch is really nice. It's just sort of stuck down, but you can actually move this out of the way and stick the gun in there. And this looks like it's actually got a belt loop on there, so it should be able to fit onto a belt or something like that. Now, I believe this would probably go inside her suit here somewhere, but um, I don't know where it's going to go, if I'm honest. It doesn't seem to fit. It's quite The suit's quite tight. Now, it might fit into the trench coat, but this version didn't come with the trench coat. It, um, this is just the normal release. I didn't order the trench coat version. I did. I forgot that there was an exclusive version, and I would have looked out for that if I could. But you know, I saw a deal on eBay. I went for it, and I completely forgot that I was looking for the trench coat version. So she doesn't have it. No biggie. But uh, here is her FBI badge, and this is like a made of a rubbery plastic. It's not like pleather or anything, which is okay. Which means it will last. But it's just got two stickers in here like that, and a very plain-looking gold badge. It's got a nice clean application, but I would have preferred if this was, I don't know, it just feels a little bit doll-like to me. This feels like something you would have got with the X-Files Barbie dolls rather than an actual high-end six-scale figure. And then of course she's got her FBI badge and this is just a sticker stuck on a piece of uh, clear plastic. No, oh, actually there's uh, one on the back and one on the front. So they didn't even manage to print on both sides to make it look like that. It's just a clear bit of plastic got this little clip here that she can clip onto her suit it looks okay but um again it's a bit underwhelming in terms of high-end stuff you would expect maybe to be double laminated so that this here id bit is actually trapped between two bits of plastic and then maybe some detail here would have been a plastic screen with some cards in that you could slide in this this will last quite a long time but again those stickers could peel off and if they peel off that's it really it's game over for your uh FBI badge and this is one of the nicer accessories it's like a 90s cell phone it's really cool look at that it actually does look like something that I had back in the late 90s it's a shame the uh, antenna doesn't extend out or anything but I can understand why it doesn't and it's got a nice little screen on there so uh, it's nice and shiny on there it looks like a, a mobile phone from the era which is great she also doesn't come with a phone holding hand so you kind of have to use the uh, the gun holding hand and it can fit in there quite nicely but you're always going to have that finger sticking out so you're always going to know it's a trigger finger hand rather than a phone holding hand but uh, yeah, that is a bit of a shame oh, oh, oh it's ringing hang on a sec, let me answer it hello? oh hi 3 A's mum what? 3 zero left his underwear at yours Oh. Oh right. Oh okay. Yeah. No. I'll. I'll, I'll tell him. I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely tell him. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, bye. Ooh. Awkward. I'm taking a look at their hands. They're okay. They're nothing special. There doesn't seem to be a lot of paint in there. Just seems to be quite generic, one six scale hands. But they're quite nicely sculpted. But that's par for the course in one six scale now. And she also comes with two spare wrist pegs, which is good because her hands are tiny and so are her wrists. And they will likely snap very easily. And an extra clip for her ID badge. Posing wise, she can look down about that much, look up about there, and she can turn left and right quite freely. The arms can go up about that high. There is a double bend in those arms and they're ratcheted, which is really nice. There is a bicep swivel. The wrist pegs can turn and there is up and down on there. Waist wise, she can turn quite a bit, but not a massive amount. And she can move a little bit, but there is restriction in the torso because of this suit. Legs can go up really high and there is a thigh swivel there. There is a double bend in the knee and the ankles are on a ball joint so they can move up and down left and right as much as you want with no restriction, which is really nice. I have to just add, when you put her legs out straight like that, she does look very leggy, doesn't she? Very long-legged. Okay, just quickly, here is a few female characters in one six scale. And you can see that there is a slight variation in the size of their heads. But who's got the smallest head? Like, like tiny head compared to all the others. It, it's clearly Scully. 
So it, it's one of those bugbears of mine that it just doesn't seem to fit in with 1.6 scale. But not only that, it definitely doesn't fit in with Mulder because whether they've overdone the size of his head to give him a right old meaty head, which is not actually true because compared to other figures, it's not that bad. Or they've drastically undersized her, partly to fit that very, very slender body. That's my only real gripe with the figure, but it's, it's a big gripe because if the head doesn't work, then all you've got is a body and some accessories. A 1-6 scale figure lives or dies by its head sculpt and it, it needs to be on point because when it's not on point, things look off, it throws the whole thing out and it makes it just a little bit harder to believe. And that's the problem I've got with Scully. But it's, it's a really nice sculpt. It looks like Gillian Anderson as Dana Scully. It's very effective. The problem is that it is very underscaled and it will throw you off a little bit when you see it standing next to Mulder. But not only that, but Mulder seems to be a little older compared to hers. She looks like 90s Scully, whereas he looks more like late 2010s Mulder. It's a little bit inconsistent in what they were going for. And if they'd have gone for, you know, 90s Mulder and 90s Scully, it would have looked great together. And they could have even undersized his head sculpt because if he was slightly underscale, and she was under scale, they'd look right standing next to each other. But the problem is, they don't look right standing next to each other. Overall guys, I like the quality, I think the accessories are good, not great. I like the suit, I like the clothing, I like the body they've used. I've liked, I like the head sculpt for the actual sculpting that they have put in. It's good. It's just too small. And let's be honest here, nobody likes bad head. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave, I'm gonna go take Mulder, I'm gonna stick him in the washing machine, and then I'm gonna chuck him in the tumble dryer, see if that doesn't shrink him up so that he can actually fit with this scully a bit more. Bye bye.